Good afternoon. Welcome to session four of the first IHF live online symposium. My name is Courtney Gayen and I am the moderator for this first lecture in part of session four. To begin, I will outline the translation options we have available for those joining us on Zoom. We have French, Spanish, Arabic and Russian translation available today. You can find these options at the bottom of your screen by clicking the globe icon and choosing the label for your language. Please note that Arabic translation is available under the label Chinese. This first IHS live online symposium forms part of the Virtual Academy recently launched by the IHS to facilitate global online learning and licensing opportunities. All of this falls under the umbrella of the IHS Education Centre, available at ihseducation.ihs.info. This symposium comprises a total of 20 lectures presented by top handball experts from around the world. This afternoon's lecture is presented by Chairman of the Playing Rules and Referee Commission, Ramon Galejo, and Chairman of the Commission for Coaching and Methods, Dietrich Spartus. Please feel free to ask questions throughout this lecture and we will stop at the end to address as many as possible. And please also note that this is being recorded, so you will be able to access it later on the IHF Education Center and on our Facebook page. Now, I hope everyone is awake because I know that Dietrich and Ramon have a question for you straight away. So I hope everyone's ready. And Dietrich and Ramon, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Courtney. Dear humble friends, welcome to this uh, online seminar on the, inside the IHF Symposium. Uh, as you know, in the last year, uh, both commission, the Coaches Commission and the Referee Commission in IHF, we are working together very close, taking care of the development of handball, development of the rules, development of our matches. Uh, just uh, working together how we can offer a, a better, better handball, more attractive handball worldwide. And uh, one of the topics that uh, we are more concerned about is the target of the online seminar today. As you see in the title, provocations and overreactions, or it means uh, simulation or uh, exaggeration of the actions. The, the photo is uh, a good uh, representation of this problem, of this problematic, because really just looking at the photo is uh, difficult to decide uh, who is the guilty, the defender or the attacker, who is the attacker, who is the defender. Right? I think that uh, all the actors in Humble, we think that uh, all the actors are responsible of this uh, situation. Players, because they are role models for many, many, many thousands, hundreds of thousands, young uh, boys and girls uh, playing handball. Also the referees, also the coaches. All of us, we are responsible to reduce first and to delete later this kind of action that uh, provoke many mistakes and provoke uh, that uh, the, work, the work of the referees are much, much more difficult. I don't know, Dietrich, what do you think? Okay, yeah, we want to start a little bit different today. Uh, before we start our presentation, we have a question to all participants. Please uh, have a look to the following really short video and give us a feedback. You can use uh, uh, the chat function, only a small uh, information. What is uh, your decision in this situation? How should the referees decide now? That is, uh, Ramon will show you the video clip. Yes, please. I saw you again, and then you can realize uh, the situation. Then it's a little bit more easier. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you can see uh, uh, it is half a second uh, uh, time for the referees to decide. So uh, make a short note. What is your decision? So far, we just have one person brave enough to give <laughs> their decision. They say two minutes. Uh, someone else says red card. Again. Someone else says red Which card. No, no one is specifying, so I assume most are saying against the defender. Oh no. Someone has said two minutes against the attacker. Oh. Most seem to be uh, 
Someone says two minutes against the defender. Someone okay. says red card against defender. Yes. Two minutes for overreaction for the attacker. And someone says also penalize the attacker for overreacting. So it's interesting. We have different opinions. And this is the reality in such critical situations. Someone okay. asked to see the video one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will do it. Yes. <laughs> we, uh, we will do it. Uh, okay, maybe it's uh, uh, enough, but uh, you see, we received a lot of different, different uh, decisions, different opinions. Uh, and uh, now you can understand uh, why the job of the referees is so difficult. So now have a look again and a closer look to this scene. I will ex explain a little bit the technical background. So at first you'll see a crossing between the left back uh, and the center back without the ball, a very well-known uh, uh, tactical mean in today's top handball. And then immediately the right half defender tries to block the pass and the right back the, in possession of the ball, immediately he reacts, goes in a one-on-one -on -one action. And now, and this is important, the left back is coming with high speed, with high speed. Here you see the possibilities for the field and the goal, ref uh, goal referee to observe the situation. And then this happened. But you will see it much more. Oh, Ramon, what do you think? What you have seen? <laughs> <laughs> really? And, uh, <clears throat> really, for sure, I think we agree, all of us, that uh, this situation is very, very difficult for the referees, even more than, the, than in, in a normal life. And then the first, uh, the position of the referees could be the, that uh, we are working with our referees about the position of movements. They know, I had say referees, they know that uh, in modern handball, static positions are not allowed for the field referee. It could be constantly moving, depending on the, on the tactical or the attacker and on the defender team. And second, even sometimes we realize that with two referees could be in top matches could be not enough because as uh, Dritik uh, told to you, who is the, who has the best possibility to see this, this action? The best possibility is for the, the coach or the defender team. And then maybe in the future when the, we are planning to make a test with three referees, and even today, you can see that uh, some of the top couples, in some moments, depend on the tactic, the position, they are in this position, between six and nine meters close to the sideline, depending on what is the problem in this area, right? So this could be for the future. In any case, the situation is really very difficult for the referees, and it's clear that uh, the overreaction, the provocation of the attacker, it's, the attacker is the only responsible. And the IHL referees, they have, I repeat to you later, clear instruction to, to punish this, uh, this action from the very beginning of the match. So now going back to our presentation. Yes. So Again, you see here uh, the situation. It is clear an unsportsmanlike action from the attacker, number 46. Uh, referees uh, uh, gave the red card against the wrong player. And uh, also this is possible that the wrong decision can affect the entire game. Uh, I was present in this match. This is also interesting uh, uh, to know. Uh, and my position was around 40 meters away in this arena. and. Clear, it is difficult uh, to decide and uh, to observe. Uh, and uh, also, my first uh, reaction was, "Oh my God, that was a big foul from the defender." So that this is really, really uh, difficult to observe and uh, to decide in around half a second. The question is: Is this really a part of our game? Uh, we will give you an answer about our opinions later on at the end of this presentation. But this is a big question through the whole presentation. Uh, again, uh, uh, maybe Ramon, you can explain a little bit uh, uh, a correction for, especially for the field uh, uh, referee. 
uh, he's in the moment not in a good uh, position. Exactly. The field referee is uh, far away of the situation. From exactly from this position, he cannot do anything because he cannot see the situation would happen. For the for the goal referee, not easy. It looks like here he can do something, but many times he might he must take care of the pivots and yeah. what happened around him. So it's difficult for him to put one eye here and one eye here. Also, it's really really difficult. So uh, uh, the best the best the the advice is for the referees for the field referee moving constantly, take the position where we have a problem, and then. I repeat you again, then maybe in the future, uh, the three referees, the third referee could be the solution. The, the position of the third referee, the trick should be here, exactly. We're yes. very close to the coach. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but that is the future. Uh, you know, we yes. will have a, a second presentation about uh, game and rule development. And sure, we will discuss uh, this possibility for the for future. Sure. For sure. Yes, of course. So now we are coming to our presentation. I uh, want to give you a short overview of uh, what we want to present today. At first, uh, a short explanation. What do we mean with overreaction and provocation? Then second, then we will analyze different so-called uh, standard situations in which such fake, fake actions are often used by the players. And in the third chapter, uh, then we will explain IGF guidelines for the referees, how they should decide in such situations, how the line through the entire game. And at the end, maybe after a short uh, summary, we have to discuss again this crucial question. Do we really want to have such actions in our game? Who is responsible? What can we do? Mm -hmm. Correct. Explanation. Ramon, that is yours. Yes, because uh, please don't think that uh, Dietrich and Ramon, they are a little bit crazy and they are inventing something, right? <laughs> Could be we are a little bit crazy, but uh, no, we are not inventing anything. Because uh, in the rule, this rule 87D is written from many years ago, many years ago. I, I, I want to, this is a summary, what is written here, exaggerating the impact of an action. The goal, the target is to provoke an undeserved punishment. But this is sadly, this is a summary of what is written in, in, in this book, in my book, is here, in your book. That is. And then, uh, did we go to the next? Just uh, through theater. Uh, no, that's not just to read the, the, the last sentence of the last uh, slide, right? Through, this is important, through theater, and some players trying to mislead or to fake or to cheat the referees. Uh, from our point of view, what happens if, uh, if a player, a good actor, uh, fake or cheat to the referees? Not, no, really not this. He is cheating all humble. He is cheating his uh, teammate. He is cheating the opponent. He is faking, he is destroying humble with this action, not against the referees. We are human beings, uh, our referees have mistakes. What's the problem? This is not a problem. The problem is when, the, because of this action, really is so difficult to take uh, the correct decision. So, rule 87D. All that, uh, all our comments in the in the, the rest of the seminar is written in this rule. And uh, you know, historically, from time to time, many years ago, we can see some actions that uh, when not clear if uh, this is a real foul or not. Okay, from time to time, that's possible. But uh, in the last two, three, four years, worldwide in all continents, in all kind of competition, we have discovered that this uh, negative tendency is growing and growing and growing. And then we think in IHF, both commissions, we think that uh, it's time to explain to all the world the problem and be, with the cooperation of all the actors, first to reduce the situation and later to delete the situation because it's not nice that, uh, that uh, some punishment from the referee to some player are really provoked from, from coming because of the provocation of the opponent. Cannot be nice. And second, you can explain better because from my side, 
I'm not the best in technique and tactic, but uh, I think that uh, this is not uh, casual, that this is well trained. Yes, of course. Yeah. The problem is for the decision making of our referees, uh, uh, the players now better and better in provocations. Yeah. Uh, they do it with a perfect technique and uh, also timing. You could saw it uh, in this uh, scene. It's a perfect timing. In the right moment, he is uh, falling down dramatically. Uh, and also, uh, sometime if it, if it hurts or whatever, they are doing this. Of course, the goal is to provoke, uh, at the end, punishments. No? And that is a, an advantage for, for the team. So the, sometimes, sure, it is well trained. We have specialists for this. Um, and we, uh, you, uh, we will show you uh, in the following moments a lot of uh, examples. Mm -hmm. But one important remark on... Uh, the following videos we have selected are only examples. We don't want to discuss specific players or teams or whatever. In principle, you can see such actions, what Ramon mentioned, uh, in the top handball worldwide. Worldwide, that is a worldwide problem. Yes, correct. And then the next uh, example, we will see example from all the continents, all kind of players or referees or coaches. So please uh, forget that this is not in anything against uh, some people in concrete. No, no, please. No. Uh, you know that uh, the different situations that they can happen today, that the provocation or wrong decision for the referees, there are three, three groups. First, provoking offensive foul that uh, in the real life cannot happen, doesn't happen. Later, provoking uh, two minutes punishment against the defendant. Just the third group on the limit or over the limit. Just when the player tried to provoke a red card against the opponent, right? They are the, these uh, three groups. Yeah. So we're starting with, a, with the first uh, group to provoke offensive fouls mm -hmm. and a, typ a typical situation uh, uh, in our entire game is uh, recorded one against two situations uh, on the outside uh, on the wing positions. You see it here when you look uh, on the right side to the video, you see uh, uh, the center back uh, tries to play a pass uh, to uh, the right back and the, the left outside defender is acting in the one against two situation. You can, in the first picture, you cannot see uh, the right wing, but in the second uh, picture down you see uh, the wing player and and the the uh, situation is very typical here uh, uh, the right back is coming with high speed with high speed uh, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 the outside defender is acting in numerical inferiority uh, and he he tries to attack uh, the backcourt player and then is the question how he is doing or she is doing this Mm -hmm. Next typical situation, also a one, a one against uh, two situation, is that both uh, defenders, half and outside defenders, switch together and try to make a double block you know, to stop uh, uh, the backup player. And here we can also see a lot of differ uh, different variations uh, how to defend this situation. Mm -hmm. So for this, we have a video. Yes, and, so now uh, just, Ramon will yeah, show us. Yes, just to remind that uh, that uh, normally when the defender is jumping or is moving forward the attacker, normally this is not the case of for offensive foul. Right. And then also D3 maybe can help us later because sometimes okay, our players normally, especially top players, they are too strong. And to pull down one player for this is so difficult. And sometimes they fall down dramatically, like uh, something, some, something big things happen, but uh, this is not the, not the real life. We see now in uh, six situations in the same video, two groups, three and three. The first three groups, the first three situations are identical, more or less identical, the defender jumping, moving forward the attacker and then falling down. Perfect, 
So here you can see the uh, outside defender is moving forward, push with the shoulder. That is not a good technical criteria uh, for an attacker for. That is a clear provoking action. The same here, the, the same. outside defender is coming from the side, clear from the side. It's happening. Both answer in the next one, the defender is moving forward, the attacker. Yes. And then yeah. after the normal contact, the defend the defender fall, fall down in the floor on the floor. Also, in this now is a critical moment because of the score and the time. And then the same situation that in the first two examples. And it's really difficult for the referees to, to decide to just if this is offensive or not. Really difficult. But we are working to improve our observation of the facts. In the next three actions, we will see three similar situations, but more easy, more easy. Just really it's, it's a light, light, soft contact, and then the defender fall down dramatically. No. This is the first one. See? Yeah, maybe we, we, can, we can say it's more easy for the referees, but also yeah. a little bit stupid uh, uh, from the Look. player. Uh, Look again. Who do this? Here. Yeah. That's a little bit holy water. This is so so clear simulation, clear yeah. attempt to provoke uh, offensive foul. And good to observe, especially for the goal uh, referee. Also similar action now. I think here the intention is more to uh, give a push to the backward yeah. player uh, and then also to provoke an uh, attacker for. Correct. Yeah, very clear. Yeah. <coughs> and finally, this is the last situation. So that is not enough contact. To fall down. And now look attention to the decision of the referees. Okay, the referees depends on the situation of the moment of the match. They decide clear body language, clear information, and they decide two direct two minutes against the defender player. Excellent, excellent decision and excellent information. From my point of view, should be in the first three actions, just uh, not offensive foul and play on. Simple. And the last three actions should be should be any kind, some kind of progressive punishment against the defender with clear body language, clear information for all the people in the in the stadium that uh, that's not possible from the very beginning of the match. Okay, then we come into the uh, second standard situation that are uh, provoked situations in the backyard, uh, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. Uh, you can see here on the right uh, side uh, an interesting picture row. Now you see that the uh, the backup player in possession of the ball has a clear uh, chance to go to the goal. It's a breakthrough situation, and the defender is coming from the side and clear to provoke uh, from the side uh, an offensive foul. Uh, that is a typical situation in one-on-one -on -one situations. But uh, I have learned from the. From Dieter, from the from our coaches, our analysts is that uh, when there is a open space, there is a gap in defense. The mm -hmm. question, and we 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 teach to the referees. The question for the referees to observe who is the first player in the position. Yes, of course. The attacker or the defender. This is critical, mm -hmm. right, uh, Dietrich? Yeah, sometimes uh, it's cr it's critical from the from the timing. But that is clear. The one important observation criteria: who is first to be in a position. Mm -hmm. in a position and in a clear in a position not running into yeah okay we have a video for this yes okay now we will see uh, uh, eight actions very similar action don't forget these questions if the defender is moving forward or not who is first in the position to to close the gap in some of them we will need the help of uh, of Right, wait a moment, sorry for the sounds.
As the first, we are in the final match of the last men's world championship. Also, a breakthrough uh, between our half and outside defender. Big emotions in the hall that is typical for such uh, situations, mm -hmm. especially in the final. But in a slow motion, you can see it very well. The half defender is coming from the side and tries to provoke an uh, offensive foul. Not in a frontal position, not in time in a frontal position, and then falling backwards. Got it. Then the good decision of the referee is uh, seven yes. meters. Okay. Yes. Okay. Second one, uh, a little bit similar, not exactly, but uh, in the same way. You see now in, in the repetition. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not easy for the referees. No? Yeah. Uh, it's a breakthrough against the throwing arm side. No? The attacker uh, moves with the arm over the head uh, of the defender, but here also. Exactly. We need from the defender one step more to close earlier the space. Correct. Exactly. Then, then it's okay. Still, uh, I understand better. Still, the gap is open. Correct. Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> and uh, and a little bit more footwork, then it's okay from the defender. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, we can this, uh, have to decide if the defender is against the attacker or not from the side or not. Yes. The repetition is a little bit more easy. Yeah, here, here it's very clear. The, the only goal is to provoke nothing else. <laughs> yeah, we see the, the repetition that we see. This is the moment how yeah. the, the defender is moving from the side against the attacker. I know this is special for you, Dietrich, because you were there in the <laughs> African Championship, correct? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Then come on. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, that is a good decision uh, the, by the Spanish referees. Uh, we had a lot of provoked uh, uh, actions in, in the whole tournament and the, both referees try uh, to have a clear line right from the beginning. You'll see we are in the 15th minutes. Uh, after this match, the, both referees said to me, this was the strongest match for them ever. Of course, it was so difficult to hold the line, especially in such situations to provoke uh, uh, attacker faults and uh, provoke uh, suspensions. Got so it. this is a real difficult job uh, for referees, also from the psychological side. Also, because some matches are also emotional or the important of the matches. Uh, we took the first example where in the final of the World Championship. This is a yeah. worldwide important match, so not, uh, not easy. Good. Now we change the continent. We go to Asian Championship. In my opinion, the, the contact between attacker and defender is not enough for this uh, dramatically uh, fall down of the defender. Yeah. Also here, the idea is at first to provoke and then so to do now, something in a technical, tactical way. Similar action, but this is not enough. And now you see the reaction of the referees is, uh, attention, clear body language, please don't do it. And this is yellow card clear advice, not only for the player, clear information for all the people in the in the sport hall. Right. Now we are in women's in the world champions in Kumamoto. And the overreaction of the defender, we are in the second half, 45 minutes. And for this kind of action. Probably something happened before, and now. The decision of the referee is very good. The defender is forward, the attacker moving against the attacker, so uh, never can be offensive foul. And then the decision is so correct. And at that moment, progressive punishment. Again in Asian Championship.
Yeah, this was also an action in the center back position. Uh, also, the first idea is to provoke, not to block okay, uh, yeah. the movement and yeah. to, to have a good position. You see it here very well. From the side, acting from the side, going forward. Clear uh, acting, clear simulation. This action, uh, good the referee's first is advantage, and then the, the, the attacker finishing the, on the wing. But then later should be some kind of progressive action, progressive punishment against this player. Depends on the match, could be yellow, or could be direct to minus. But this kind of action cannot be possible in, in our hand, right? Okay, Dietrich. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can continue. The next situation ah, is wait. the situations at the goal area line. Uh -huh. um, also, we uh, we have uh, such situations at the six okay. meter line. You can yes. show it and direct. Yes, correct. We can continue. Okay, then this is the idea. Okay, we see now two actions. First, this is here. You see, like uh, this is even no foul, even uh, light, belly light, light contact, it's nothing to do. And then that's it. Yeah. So, this kind of action, the decision of the referees immediately, immediately when, when they are absolutely sure about the situation, if they have a good uh, point of observation, and then the decision should be clear, like two minutes for the, for the defender. Now we are again, we jump again, uh, and then we go to Asian Championship. Look in the, in the, pos the position in the, the pivot zone. From my uh, point of view, Dietrich, they are fighting uh, for a, the position. Yeah, yes, of course, it's normal uh, body contact. We know this no? without the ball between defender uh, and pivot, and then uh, this uh, contact uh, the uh, the player uses to fall dramatically down. Uh, that is also a provoked action. You know which hard contact we have in this area, and that is not possible to do this okay. in this way. Uh, fully, fully agree. Uh, so that was the first chapter. Now, Ramon, you can make the introduction for the second one. Yes, and then this is the second group about uh, uh, provocation when the provocation or simulation or reaction of the, of the players uh, what is the consequences we discussed until now about the uh, offensive foul and now we enter when the the idea of the of the of the one player is uh, to provoke a punishment punishment progressive punishment against the opponent in this case the next uh, videos we will see some action where the Sometimes the referees decide wrongly, decide two minutes against the against the defender when real the real life is that nothing nothing happens. The first uh, video, this is a special situation in the backcourt. Uh, a jumping attacker falls backwards to the ground. You see it here on the right side in a, in, in the picture. Uh, uh, we don't know what happened before or after. But that is a typical situation. Uh, the question is a contact uh, and uh, the player in possession of the ball is jumping and sometimes attackers try to provoke here two minutes. Of course, they are falling dramatically down. Né? And and the goal is with this exaggerated action mm -hmm. uh, to fake at the end the referees, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Dif it is difficult. It is difficult also uh, to decide and, and to divide uh, this situation. Of course, don't forget uh, the IJF had in the past uh, uh, a strong line pushing uh, attackers while jumping. Uh, but now we we can recognize that the, the players use a little bit this IJF line. Yes, and, and that makes the job for the referees really difficult. Yes, correct. In the next uh, video, in the next video, we we have selected for you six actions. Six. Again, the first three actions they are uh, more or less similar, like uh, clear uh, exaggeration action, uh, clear overreaction that looks that uh, something important, something big is happening, but uh, this is not real. 
And then we will see in the, last, the, the next group of actions. That first, that's these three actions. First match. You know, it looks like something, something serious happened. We've seen the repetition that this is, um, looks like a normal, it's normal, a normal contact, contact yeah. Build, yeah. even defender and attacker. Not in the same attack, some seconds later. Now that is the first free throw, and now, yeah. now the situation is coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit the same, more dramatically uh, to fall down. <laughs> it's also a short contact, not a hard push. It's repetition is slow motion of both actions. Yeah. And you see also the reaction, a well-known defender in the Spanish team. We know him. <laughs> Uh, he is a little bit laughing. Yes, it is difficult. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But at, at the end, both teams are doing this. Yeah. Of course. I spoke with several coaches about uh, this situation and uh, they told me even such here, what you see here now, even if it is hurt, if it is hard to fall on the ground, doesn't matter. The main goal is to provoke a two minute suspension. Okay. Now we jump a little and go to African Championship. Yeah. Also the same. short push. That's very Normal foul from the defender. But a good explanation from the referees. Yes, exactly. Nice. Normal foul and then... Yeah. And the referees at least, they, they show to the player that that's not possible. Next time he will receive a proxy yeah. punishment. And now the last two situations, the, more or less the same, but uh, attention because we have a Added difficulty is the, the time. Yes, the time, look to the, the time, time and, and, and the, to the result. <laughs> and the result, yes. <laughs> right. And Here's the same, also it is uh, typical yeah. when the backcourt player holds the ball. No? And when you have a look in, in the slow motion, really early he is looking not to the goal. Uh, oh. The intention is not to go uh, direct to the goal. Holds the ball and then falling down. Here you see it. Uh, right. yeah. Difficult for the referees. Okay. Here it's more, a little bit more easier. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Normal contact from, from my side. Normal contact, just a simple free throw. And then the last one, this is? Yeah. The last men's world championship. We see the repetition. Excellent the field referee. Yeah. Clear, clear advice for the attacker. Because now you can see a small foul from the defender and now the overreaction of the attacker, trying to provoke a punishment for the defender. All right. Okay, we are coming to the uh, second situation to provoke two minutes uh, suspension. And that are, uh, in the face, something in the face, no? I remember. Yes, of course, <laughs> to pretend to be hit in the face. Uh, also, this is only uh, a picture. I don't know what happened before, but you see uh, in at least no contact, only short contact, maybe with the right hand and something happened uh, uh, and uh, to do something uh, with the head. The problem is the attacker 
you will see it here in, in, in the examples in the video, the attacker pulls his head backwards with, uh, and sometimes without any contact or with, let me say with a small contact. And this is often also supported that the attacker falls down dr dramatically and, and, and both behaviors uh, have the goal to provoke uh, uh, the referee's decision. Uh, and also have a look to the scenes. Uh, the goal is also to find, uh, to feign, to fake high intensity in this situation. Uh, that is, oh, uh, that the referees uh, uh, um, have the feeling, oh, something strong happened. And that is also a problem. <laughs> Just uh, let me read it to us that uh, normally, Normally, all the players re try to respect each other, right? Yeah. And they know that uh, when they touch the face, the head of the opponent, they know that they are guilty. They accept immediately the two minutes, the two yeah. minutes, not the, other, the two minutes. And normally they say, sorry, my friend, and they go out normally. This is a normal behavior. I like when the a player uh, respect the decision of the referee, a player understand that, uh, sorry, was my mistake. Uh, I'm not talking with the red cards possible. We, we discuss a little bit later. And then, please, it's not allowed that uh, any player can use this kind of situation to provoke direct two minutes against the opponent when really nothing happens, when really no contact with the, with, with the face, right? That's the idea. We we'll see four actions first in this match. <laughs> yeah, the first decision of by the referees is uh, attacker fall. Then they go together and discuss the situation. And then they decided two minutes against the defender. And they showed the defender hits into the face of the attacker. Looked in a slow motion. Exactly. And this, this is the movement I explained to you uh, uh, to pull back uh, uh, the, the face in the back uh, to provoke this situation, this decision. Exactly. I think this is an image, this action and the next action that you can see now, really yeah. neg negative for our sport, negative for our sport. And create, and I, I don't know, Dietrich, you seen the same, that they create a negative atmosphere in the match. Yes, of course. Yeah, between, that is a big between, problem. Between yeah. the teams and with the referees in the middle. And then yeah. this is so difficult yeah. to not, control uh, these situations. Yeah, not only uh, between the teams and the players yeah. and referees, also yeah. the spectators. Yeah. They're... Uh, are emotional no? exactly. against uh, uh, one player, against one team, and the emotion are rising up, and that is not not a good for that us. And also to... against the referees because the mistake yes. of the yeah. and then and then yeah. at the end uh, the, the image of the of the match is not good, right? Yeah. Okay, then we continue similar action. The next three uh, examples. <coughs> Yeah, similar situation. Here you see it very clear. Yeah. Okay, it's a contact. Yes, normal foul, free but throw. Exaggerated free action, throw. clear, clear. Exactly. And pull back the head to provoke second action, a strong hit. The same match, second action in the same match. Yeah. And the last situation in this match, you you don't know it, you will see. That's yeah, this is unbelievable. That's it. Could be some kind of contact with the defender against the attack. Yes, of could course. Be, uh, maybe some uh, light touching in the face could be, why not? But it is kind of reaction. Yeah. So, so negative. We, our yeah, we have a contact spot that is clear. Sometimes the contact is also hard, but it's not necessary to make this. It is a Hollywood action and not nice. Here you see it. Yeah. 
Okay, with the right hand, he was maybe slightly touched uh, the face, could be, but then this reaction. And then you can believe what, what does it mean for the whole atmosphere in the game. <laughs> Okay, I hope it's enough clear. <laughs> so let us go forward. So that was uh, uh, actions to it into the face of an opponent. The next uh, video uh, scenes, uh, we will show you uh, a different action that is very often, you can see it very often in, in crossings when, when uh, the attackers are moving very quickly in running motions. Uh, and uh, also here, the goal uh, is a little bit to feign high intensity when they are falling dramatically down on the ground. Pretend to be pushed very hard. That is the next topic of Correct. our video. Correct. We see here now five, five uh, actions with this uh, target to provoke uh, sorry, two minutes against the uh, defender. Yeah, that was the situation. Uh, he yeah. was parallel to the nine meter line. Sure, a contact, yes but not a hard contact. And the referee decided two minutes. That's, uh, for, our, for our opinion, it's not enough for, for that two minutes. It's Here, I come back a, a little bit just to show you the first, our first question. Who is the best to observe to observe yes. this action again, again, <laughs> the, the coach, <laughs> again, the coach. So um, now you understand how I, I repeat to you, for all of you, sometimes, sometimes in some moments in our top referees, the field referee, instead of to be here, he is here, more or less in this position or just on the other side. Why? Because I have a problem. I have, for example, here, three white players, three green players. And then from this position, it's difficult for me to see something, but from the close to the coach, I can observe much more yeah. better. Uh, Ramon, Ramon, yes. the situation is also also really good. Uh, we know from, from our really top referees that they yes. change uh, their position play, especially yes. the, the field referee. Yes. The field referee yes. uh, to, in today's handball is really closer to the situation. He is now uh, 13, 14 meters uh, away. And uh, that is the experience from our top, uh, coming from our top referees, uh, to be more closer, to, be, to have a view more diagonal in, into the defense. That, that's a new position exactly. play of our, especially our field uh, exactly. referees. That's the question. No static position, yes. constantly moving. The position depends on the, of the tactics in the attacker and in defense. Just to to be on time and the best in the best moment and in the best place in each moment. It's difficult, yes, but uh, we must do it. And we will see the our test with uh, three references. They are better or not for, for the future handball, right? Okay, next. Uh... It's very very identical to the first yes. action uh, Brazil Croatia. Now this situation. Absolutely normal free throw. Yeah. No normal. Nothing. Now again we go to the final of the World Championship. You know this backcourt play, uh, player. He's very strong. A really yeah. excellent player. Unfortunately, the referees have enough experience 
to yeah, detect this situation able because, to... because there is no contact with the face, no contact yeah. with the with the head. Yeah. And you also falls down very quickly. Okay. You see it here. Exactly. And uh, yeah, not necessary. He's a strong exactly. player. It's not necessary. And now this is special action. Oh. <laughs> I think uh, maybe that he can help me because it looks a really well well trained action. <laughs> Yes, of course, and it's castle. difficult to observe. It's difficult to yeah, observe. You yeah. you can see it only in the slow motion very well. Now you see it here. That's that, that's... Coming a little bit from wrestling or whatever, this idea, unbelievable fake against the referees. Yeah, but uh, really, really difficult to 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 see and to observe and to take a decision for the referees. Yeah. The question is, uh, if such uh, actions develop, develop, and develop then sure we will have a problem in our game especially the job of the referees is more and more difficult exactly. uh, maybe you can continue um, uh, with, the, with the last uh, uh, video clip in uh, the second part to provoke uh, uh, two minute suspensions uh, in the pivot area in the pivot zone okay I, go, I, I offer the continue immediately. I, I saw the video made the next video yes We we'll see now four actions. First group of three actions, very similar. Clear overreaction of the pivot, because this yeah. is not enough. I think not enough for to to fall down in, in yeah. such a way. Don't forget on the pivot position today, especially in the men's handball, we have strong uh, uh, pivots, more than 100 kilo, <laughs> well trained. So, so totally. He can totally, hold pushes. <laughs> totally opposite to my body, no? Did you see? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. I, am, yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah. You. Then this is clear. Yeah. No. Now there's the same identical situation. Fighting for the position. Yeah. Normal then, fight. Yes. Yes. Normal fight. Advantage. Advantage. Good. And now suddenly, this is the situation. And now, unfortunately, the referee said uh, the attacker, please don't do it anything more. Yeah. That's not yeah. Also, the same human basis is very a little bit special. Yeah, there's also no, also a pivot with maybe one more than 100 kilo. Also, suddenly he yeah. falls down dramatically. Yeah. Uh, that that's the same. I see. I think that uh, to pull down him, you need yeah. a really uh, yeah. a lot of strength. Eh? Really difficult for the referees at this situation. And the last one, <laughs> this is a little bit a, a little bit special. Maybe this is in combination with the the last video, the last action when the 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 pivot provoke uh, the the fall down the, the, the attack. Look, because this is a last tendency in men's and in women's. And unfortunately, also, I uh, we see this situation uh, every day more and more in youth and in junior competitions, right? The repetition is so nice to see the action of the attacker. Now you can see it here very well, yes. Normally, the goal referee must be able to observe this situation, but also it is important that he also acts in a diagonal position. I think it is a good position to see this. That is now also a tendency, rising up, rising up. What we are working with the, with the referees is that uh, pay attention, please, because today uh, these strong players, men and women, they need only one hand to catch the ball. But this is not the problem, this hand. The problem is the second hand. Uh, mm -hmm. The both must be in, in cooperation, teamwork, to control what happened with the second arm, second hand of the player. In this case, it's clear. It should be offensive foul and progressive, progressive punishment against the attacker. From the very beginning, if the action is so clear like like this one yeah. right so you, you 
you click. So then Maybe we you continue can, and you can we display. are coming to the third part in ah. the chapter for standard situations. This is very well. Okay, this uh, third part, this is, I thought to you, this is the limit, no limit, over limit situation. When the, these kind of actions, provocation, simulation, overreaction, exaggeration, inventing situation, provoke a red card against the opponent. This is over the limit. Because it could be a clear influence, it could be if one player must, must be out, but the rest of the match is clear influence, maybe in the, or could be, or for sure, in the final, in the final result of the match. So uh, really in IHS, we are uh, worried in general, about, in general about this situation, but especially worried about this, uh, this, uh, these critical actions, right? Okay, um, <clears throat> we, we will show you now four scenes, four different scenes. Uh, we can um, go quickly through and uh, then we can have a look uh, to the videos in a row. <clears throat> you see the first situation that uh, uh, the attacker tries to pretend to be hit hard into the face. You see here this situation. The second uh, situation is uh, in a pivot zone. Uh, here a, a player or the situation totally without out the ball. Uh, a defender uh, is pretend to be hit hard into the stomach. You see it here with a yellow circle. Mm -hmm. uh, the next is pretend to be hit hard into the face. And you see it here, the referee showed uh, the red card. At the end, it is a wrong decision. And the fourth scene is similar to what we have seen uh, before. Uh, 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 attacker here, left back, wins a duel against a half defender. And you see from the left side, the next defender is coming to close the gap. And then also uh, have a look what happened in this situation. This is a typical situation. Okay. then. I offer you the three, yeah, four videos. Good. Then we see the first situation. So referee discuss the situation and then look what happened now. Ramon, that you must explain. <laughs> yes, uh, well, in the first part could be now that uh, there is some contact with the face. Yeah, a slight, face slight touch is, a is slight possible. Touching. That's what yeah. we, and this is for two minutes, and, uh, but the, the overreaction is not good because it's not on purpose. This is a, the defender is trying uh, fight, uh, fighting for the, for the ball. So it could be, I touch your face, but okay, sorry, but it's not for this kind of reaction. This is the first part. But the second part is, uh, okay, the referee, Offer his hand. Yes, we are in the same sport. All of us, we are the we have different targets to win the match or to take care of about the rules. Many people also outside of the match have another duties. But we are in the same in the same sport. We are fair people. In general, we are fair people. If I give you my hand, please shake my hand. Come on, come on. We are the same. So it was not even in the moments that in some moments when the, the player is angry. Come on. We are exactly in the same, in the same, in the same match. So please come on. I don't like this kind of situations, right? Okay. The next uh, situation is uh, at uh, the six meter line. The yes, second wait, video. Yes. Wait a moment. I prepare it. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. I share the screen. Yes. Yeah. Now it's here. So look to, uh, to the six meter line. You will see it also in a, a better angel from above. Yeah. It's a typical dual uh, defender uh, mm -hmm. pivot. Yep. And then the suddenly he falls down. Because yeah. normally the pivot and the defenders and attackers, they are in close contact permanently. Correct. And then please. 
it looks that something dramatic happens, but uh, you can see from this that really absolutely nothing. Just close contact between both and but uh, such behavior is very negative for the whole atmosphere. Uh, so you must avoid this direct from the beginning. Otherwise, the referees have no chance. Exactly. So I got so. again that. Uh, sorry. Then the third uh, situation. Yes, this is the first situation. Also, a situation where a player pretend to be hit hard in the face. Mm -hmm. well, now we are in a, in a Champions League match in Portugal. Porto in the spring. And we will see in the repetition similar situation. The referee saw the red card to the defender, but this was not the real life, unfortunately. So it should be a normal foul, do you think? Yeah. No. Yep. But it's okay. difficult to observe. Also here you can see a lot of uh, players around the situation. So again, the positional play, the movements of the referees is really important to have a chance to see exact what happened. Yeah. So I go again with the last, so the last scene. Last, the last scene. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a similar situation. The hey, sorry. The left back wins a one on one action yep. and go inside. And the next inside defender tries to block uh, the gap. And then we have a contact. You see, it looks like something serious happened against the head, against the face of the attacker. But in the repetition, yeah. you see that the, the contact is in the in the chest, in the shoulder. Yeah, it's a normal clear contact here, chest, yes. shoulder, between chest yeah. and shoulder. Normal contact, even not for two minutes, even just only for uh, uh, for uh, just free throw. Look again. On this it's position, a... look here. Absolutely. It's also, yeah, very exaggerated easy. action. Very clear. Yeah, very pull his head and falling down. Normal foul, correct. So uh, then, did you, you can show the. Yeah, I will continue. Here yeah. you see see the situation uh, again, very clear. This is a standard situation, uh, and that is also uh, the reason that we are working with the referees also in a tactical way. Now, this happens in a zig zero. Uh, now, how the zig zero acts in such uh, situations. Now, when uh, a left back a right back wins a duel, what is the behavior of the inside defender? So that is also one reason that we continue to develop the tactical education of our top referees, and we are doing this in in, in every tournament uh, since. Uh, long years now yeah. so uh, now uh, we want to explain a little bit the IHF guidelines for such actions and sure this Ramon you must do this <laughs> yes of course that is very it's a summary of the of uh, our comments in the last uh, in, in the last hour yeah. but the, the question is for the referees first to work first to work outside the match, before the match, to see many, many handball in, in all the world. Second, to understand uh, what, to understand more about handball, what means real, real contact, real foul, or not uh, normal contact, not normal foul that uh, deserve a punishment. Third, to, uh, to do something from the very beginning in the match, to do something from the very beginning in the match, something means depending on the situation could be directly progressive punishment against the responsible, the players, or just to show a clear advices and body language and information. But in any case, consist, consistent progressive punishment should be when the sign of the situation uh, happens in, in the match. Second, then clear information. We have seen some nice examples in the last, in the last videos. 
clear body language for everyone. Not private normally. Private is nothing. Private is between you and me. No, no, no. Every, every one of these situations could be some examples and some exceptions sometimes. But in general, should be clear information for all the audience in the sport hall or over there by TV or by videos for all the actors, other referees, players and coaches. And of course, again, preventive decision as soon as possible in the match because the, the referees, you know, they know it. They know if we wait and wait and wait for solution, the solution never, never comes alone, never. So that's, this is the general guidelines for the referees and I hope all of you, all the players and coaches, I hope you understand. Yeah, then, uh, um, of course, uh, the problems uh, rise, rising up in the in mm -hmm. the last years, we discussed it, uh, uh, what we can do, and this mm -hmm. is a new proposal is coming for the next uh, international IHF events. Also, Ramon, you must explain this. Yes, uh, in this limit situation, the last uh, four or five videos we have shown you that you see that uh, uh, the decision of the referees was a wrong red card, wrong red card against, against a player because of the clear simulation or Hollywood action or something. And this is, can take a, a clear influence in the final score of the match. And we, we prefer that it never can happen. And then the regulation IHF, new regulation is that they, in these cases, <clears throat> uh, when the official of the match uh, come to see the, the action and then later in, in the video, the official of the match, official of the match, IHF official must send a report to the competition management. The competition management receive the report, analyze the situation and send another report to the disciplinary commission and then disciplinary commission take a decision. Finish. The decision should be, in these cases, for example, should be at least one match punishment later in the next match. This player cannot be played. Uh, this is not new, really, because we have the sample of the football uh, English Premier League. During many, you know, the, the behavior of the, of the football players in, in the Premier League. They hate each other. They fight against each other, even between teammates. When some of the players in football, they try, they make a diving inside the goal area, trying to provoke a penalty, right? And then in the past, during some years, uh, in uh, England Football Association, they create a special, a special commission that uh, after the matches, after the matches, they they had the right to punish these uh, players, these players with one match or more. Uh, in the last two, three years, in the last two years, this is not necessary because uh, this case of uh, provocation, penalty or diving is one of the cases that uh, the referees are allowed to go to see the video, the bar, the video assistant referees. And then they don't need the commission later because the referees take a decision just during the match. So. I hope that in the future we cannot uh, we cannot follow. We, we don't need. I hope in the future we don't need to, to do the same. Okay, so then we are coming to our last part. Uh, and uh, at first, uh, we uh, we want and finally we want to show you uh, scenes from only one match, and have a look what happened in one match is not important which uh, match, which teams, which players, only uh, uh, follow the uh, situations. Uh, we, we will not uh, make a comment, no. uh, but we will ask you again at the end, is this a part of our game? So the, this would be the last uh, video of the match or this uh, presentation. And uh, as Dietrich uh, told to you, this is something about a uh, summary of the, of the problematic all the world and then no comments after the video, no comments from, from our side. It's the same match.
تقدم البحرين يحاول ان يعود والمباراه في دقيقتين في دقيقتين لتصنع يوهم الحاكم انه الخطا لصالح لاعب البحريني علي ميرزا دقيقتين في دقيقتين لعلي ميرزا البحرين فيها عقوبه فيها عقوبه مواديه من الخلف دقيقتين صح صح للاعب خطير من اللي طلع الان لاعب علاء بن راشد افتكرت اللاعب فرانك علاء بن راشد شوف هذه ما بيا الحين هذه هذه على طول دقيقتين من الخلف سح واحد يقول اللي طاح مو كنا اللي طلع اخوه اخوه هذا اللي طلع علي ميرزا و دقيقه محمد ميرزا محمد ميرزا شوفه الصلاه ما سجل والنتيجه 6 4 والكره مع المنتخب القطري رمي حره وقف المباراه حديث الحكمين انذار انذار كرة مع البحرين وين رايح الصياد يحاول الصياد لما حسن مبروك قدامه بقوة حسن مبروك يلعب دفاع متماسق اه في دقيقتين في دقيقتين لحسن مبروك صياد على الارض هذا ميرزا شوف شوف الروح شوف الكل مبتسم ابتسامة وحديث ولا زعل ولا شيء في دفع من حسن مبروك ما هو قرار الحاكم راح نشوف صياد احد نجوم كرة اليد البحرينية الاعمدة الاساسية تاريخ كبير في دقيقتين لحسن مبروك دقيقتين ايقاف دقيقتين وسيلعب منتخب لقطري ناقص لاعب والمنتخب البحريني كامل شوف الصياد عطى دقيقتين يا دقيقتين يا الصياد خلاص دقيقتين وما فيك الا العافيه خبره خبره هذا اللاعب حتى الان البحرين مرتبك وقطر تهاجم تمريره عادت لقطر حتى الان سباك بحريني سباك بحريني في دقيقتين في دقيقتين للبحريني احمد المقابي احد النجوم المميزه المقابي عليك مهمة كبيرة كارة واضحة لأنه تفاعل أنه في دخول خاطئ شوف شوف فأنه متعمد اللعب فأعطى So yeah you could saw the life of the referee is sometimes really hard <laughs> you, you have seen it uh, and the big question is do we really want to see matches like these so, as a summary, uh, at first, we have to point it out, techniques of deciding referees are getting better and better. That is a clear tendency we have to recognize. And also that uh, this kind of unsportsmanlike like conduct, right? like yes. uh, this example, during all, all our seminar, right? mm, it looks like uh, they are performed by specialists, well, well trained. In a lot of situations, <clears throat> it's really uh, difficult to distinguish between real and, and fake actions. And sure, the position, uh, positional play of the referees is crucial, but uh, if it is not possible to avoid this in the future, what can we do? Now, you remember, uh, we come back uh, in one week uh, about the discussion to use in the future three referees. Exactly. That, uh... We know that, especially in top matches, <coughs> the, the, the decision of the referees are not easy. The work of the referees is not easy. But if we create more problems, we will have more mistakes. And then at the end, uh, the atmosphere will be really, really negative for, for all the people in, in the match. Right? Yes. And yeah, at the end, uh, uh, such fake actions can have a, a big influence, a big impact on the atmosphere uh, in the hall. We mentioned yeah. this, uh, yeah. and that is maybe also sometimes not, not so good for sport. Yeah. What is necessary to discuss? At first, it is maybe the first question, what is our game philosophy? That is a question more uh, for the coaches. Uh, is this a part of our game philosophy? That, that Every coach has to think about this and 
to decide uh, what is his line in such uh, topics. Uh, the next question is uh, really how do we want to present our our sport, our handball worldwide? Because uh, the, now the last uh, big image of handball was in the Olympic Games in Rio. Excellent. So a lot of people from uh, far away of handball were really, really positive surprise about our, about our sport. So this is the, our target. Clear and nice, nice, uh, nice, uh, spectacular. Clear uh, the best uh, tactics uh, in the future, and of course to avoid also uh, these negative examples. Yeah. And the next question is: uh, such actions is as good for our uh, youngsters, for our young uh, generation. As you know, uh, young uh, players learn quickly, uh, also from bad behaviors. Now, I think that is not not a good signal. Uh, from our best players, from our top players, they have also a responsibility for this. And finally, that uh, we think that uh, all the people involved in Hamel, all the actors, all the parties, all players, coaches, referees, also with people that we have responsibilities outside of the field, we are the responsible to offer the most attractive possible image of Hamel. If not in the future, if uh, we don't so clear attractive handball with a lot of sport today, you know, a lot of sport, even new sport in Olympic Games, a lot of uh, offers, and then we will have no children in the future, no girls and no kids, and then we have no children, we have no future. Yeah, at the end, all parties are responsible. That is uh, our uh, main result: referees, coaches, players, uh, also. Uh, the federations, the continental federations, uh, the international handball federations, the member federations have to discuss this and they need a position for this. I think uh, uh, handball has worldwide a really good image. We know this from our top events. I remember Rio in Rio, we had so good feedback uh, for the quality of our sport. Our, our sport is fast. Our sport Okay, it's hard in body contact, but that is uh, a special uh, criteria of our sport, and we can sell this in a good way. Also, uh, we have a lot of actions in a very short time when you compare to to other uh, sports. But do we need uh, such actions like this? When you look to the right uh, side to the picture, I think that this this is a good uh, picture of our sport. Fighting for the ball, actions like these make our sport attractive. And this we have to discuss. All parties have to discuss this. That's correct. Fully agree, especially with the last, <laughs> with your last uh, comments about the photo. The photo is so nice. Two players, uh, emotional moment, and they're fighting for the ball. Uh, that's this idea. The referees note, for example, that uh, when a player is fighting for the ball, he must receive a premium. You understand what it means. But when a player is not fighting for the ball, he's fighting for another part of the body of the opponent, he must receive a punishment. This is the, 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 the main idea. So, Ramon, we are in a good time. Thank you for your attention. And we are waiting yes. for your questions or really, additional yeah. suggestions, whatever. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. OK, we have a few questions. Um, a couple about the video referee technology we use. Um, people want to know, would it be good to use this for these situations? Um, and if you think yes or no, can you explain a bit of why? You know, the question, we, you use the video, for example, in the next uh, World Championship in Egypt, we will use the video, but some uh, specific situations, of course, to help the referees when, the, for example, something happens outside the view of the referees, something like that, right? But also we must take care with not, uh, not to provoke many interruptions in the match. Yeah, our match today with some uh, rules like a fast throw off or the injured player rule, uh, not cleaning, for example, no cleaning, and then no unnecessary timeouts means that uh, just a few interruptions in the match. And then the, we can offer the, the spectators high rhythm, high speed, 60 minutes. This is absolutely different than the rest of team sports. Humble is absolutely different. Spectators cannot uh, have, have no time to, to, to close their eyes one second. And then also we must take care not to use the, the video replay too many times. So first we will try to, 
to to work with the referees, we try to send clear messages to players and coaches to avoid the situation. If no success, we will see in the future. At the moment, no, this is not a case for video pro. Diedrich, do you have anything to add from maybe a kind of coaching perspective? What the, if you know what the teams think about this? What would they prefer more interruptions? To make no, sure. no, 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 I don't think so. Uh, you know, we have a, spe a special character of our game and it is in, 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 from the basis really good. And, and our, our guidelines, our thinking is to avoid interruptions, né? to have quick transitions between attack and defense. That's, that's in the moment our philosophy. And I think the coaches are thinking uh, in, 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 the, in the same way. <laughs> And, and this is a good picture also uh, that we have a different structure to other sports. Uh, and uh, I think we are for, uh, that is our main goal. We will explain it uh, next week when we present uh, some ideas uh, to develop uh, our game and, and some rules. One guideline is always less interruptions, avoid interruptions. Yes, in, in last January, uh, Dietrich and myself, we were in the ch championship in Africa and Asia. Also, our colleagues in in America, we have uh, we had meetings with the uh, with the coaches of all the teams. Uh, we discuss many many topics, and this is a critical critical moment. High rhythm of the match, less interruption. For example, they agree absolutely that after a goal, don't stop the match for for a yellow card just for small small things. For example, so less interruption and high rhythm and high speed in the match. Mm -hmm. And that means that we just need to limit the number of times that we would use video limit the situation yeah. as we already do. Um, we have a bit, a few more specific questions. Um, someone asked about penalties. If, if there is a foul committed against the attacker, but also the attacker overreacts, can you talk about how, I think it's possible to punish both, but can we talk about this a bit? And normally in this case, in this case, yes. Okay, first case, for example, this happens. There is a foul and then the attacker overreact. I think the defender must receive a punishment because this is a foul. Okay, then, and then this is a clear message for the attacker. Please don't do it anything more in the match, correct? First time. Mm -hmm. it, it is a situation is repeated and repeated, of course. Also, he is guilty and he must receive some kind of punishment. But normally, when the attacker receives a clear advice and then the, he, he tried, that don't, don't repeat anymore in the match. Mm -hmm. and, and it is very, very important to do it right from the beginning. Yeah. If you start with this in the second half, you, it That's is too late. much too late. Yeah, much too late. Too late. Yeah. You have to, to use the first situation where you observe this as a referee, to use this and give a clear signal, a clear information. It's one thing that I've noticed a bit of the theme over all the presentations we've had from referees and Ramon, People seem to have some hesitation to punish attackers or to apply the rules as much to attackers. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to say about this, Ramon? About <clears throat> just that people should have, should. <laughs> no, just listen. Uh, it's clear the rules. This book, this book is written for all the players, defenders, and attackers. It's clear the rules are the same for players and attackers. Okay, normally in defense, the defend normally the defenders are more guilty about uh, uh, pushing or catching or holding. But if the same foul is committed by the attacker, he must receive the same uh, the same uh, punishment from the referee. It could be offensive foul, and depends on the offensive foul. For example, could be also yellow card or two minutes. Remind this example that uh, we offer you when the pivot catch the. Uh, the t-shirt of the defender. Imagine that this is the opposite. The defender is the guilty to uh, make a long holding of the t-shirt of the pivot. Immediately the referee decide yellow or two minutes, depends on the moment of the match. So this is the same. Should be offensive foul plus yellow or two minutes. Yeah, and this is a clear, clear tendency. I know it from a lot of discussion uh, with the coaches uh, in the big tournaments. No? Uh, the, this is also the opinion from the coaches to focus more also to the behavior yeah. of the attackers. Correct. In different situations, uh, uh, that is a clear tendency. Yeah. Okay, um, let's get a bit more specific. The, this is one of the last questions we've received so far. Is just um, when when a wing is shooting from a very small angle, and they 
hook the arm or something to try and draw a penalty. What is is the uh, what do you recommend as the punishment in this situation? It's a bit difficult without seeing an exact situation, yeah. but mm. generally, yeah, I think that uh, okay, it's difficult, it's difficult what uh, you what you say this question. But imagine that uh, if if the, the defender position is in correct position, the defender is in correct position, not moving, not jumping against the attacker, and then the attacker is responsible not uh, to to touch, not to hit the defender with the with the open arm. Different is the defender still is moving against the attacker, but it's not easy question. But uh, sometimes, but only a few times, not maybe in the past more deeply. But I think that today, I I'm not seeing many situations where the the win the attacker is provoking the contact. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, yeah we had this uh, some years ago. That was a, yeah. was a tendency some yes. years ago. That, exactly. that, uh, we had some specialists on the wing positions. Yeah. That they uh, they try to provoke uh, a seven meter and two, two minutes. Uh, very often you could saw that they don't have an idea to shoot, <laughs> to go for a, a shooting <laughs> action, <laughs> only <laughs> to provoke this. Yeah. But I think this is now a little bit away, yeah. um, mm -hmm. in, in, uh, especially in the top handball. Uh, I Correct. think uh, that was a good education also for the referees. And today, this is not uh, so a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked about the at the beginning of the match, if you're the referee, how to show the players that you don't accept these overreactions. Um, I think they're more asking about if you should say something verbally, but can you talk about, especially the opening of the match, uh, how you would suggest handling this? We have seen in some videos some nice examples. <laughs> if uh, some of the, of our spectators <clears throat> come back again to see the to see the this presentation, this seminar when the is reading the education center, you can see some actions with the, some situation where the referee saw something like uh, don't do it, but should be something good body language, but just not uh, not talking because talking is only private. Just uh, for this for all the audience. Also, mm -hmm. sometimes the referees must be good actors, good actors, eh? not uh, not Jim Jim Carrey or something. Just good actor like Al Pacino or something like that mm -hmm. <laughs> to explain clearly to repeat. What can what was the action for? Why I decide now two minutes, for example? Why I decide red card? This is a very very important information for all the players. And they have to use it right from the beginning, yes. right from the beginning. Otherwise, the problems are rising up. Yeah. Okay. the The last question is not actually about this topic of the lecture, but we'll ask since we have two minutes left. Um, this person asked, "Is it?" Is it true that you should avoid giving punishments to coaches in the last five minutes of the second half? No, no. What is it? no, no, no? This is not the question. The question is that uh, in the last moments of the match, in the last moment of the match, at, uh, any decision against the bench, against the coach or second coach, is that should be absolutely necessary and clear, not because of a small thing. Yes. Because yes. uh, imagine uh, some of the action we have seen in Toma. Imagine the final of the World uh, World Championship final, Olympic final, uh, where if uh, the, the the score is so so close, and then emotions. And then I think the, the in that moment the referees must be absolutely focused in the match, and the word of the IHL delegates must be to to help and to control the situation, but only to take decision if it's really really necessary. If not yes. they start to avoid. Yeah. And that's a clear guideline from the IHF side. Yeah, yeah. But I, I know a, that yeah. this is a discussion yeah. by, a lot of, by a lot of coaches. I know this, but yeah, this, yeah. that is a clear guideline. But not exactly the, the question like uh, someone yeah. asked to you. No, no, this is not. Just to be, to be clever, a little bit clever. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, and just so everyone knows that there are a lot of materials related to these topics that Diedrich and Ramon uh, have been talking about for many years uh, on the education center, but also yes. on the IGF website, you have all the rules and regulations and yep. a big section on this. So you can familiarize yourself with all the details there as well. Um, I think we'll have to end there. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Dietrich and Ramon. Thank you very and much. And thank you to everyone who joined us. Uh, we have another lecture coming up at three o'clock Central European summer time in 30 minutes. 
that is with IHF lecturer O Siong Ok. She is also the head coach of the women's youth national team for the Republic of Korea and a former top player herself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope that we will see you all again then. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, friends. Bye.